Good evening. I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. We welcome Dr. Williams to his first meeting as superintendent. While we introduced him at our last meeting on June 18th, his first official day on the job was July 1st. So this is his first official meeting and we are excited to make progress in providing our young people with the high quality education and care they need and deserve. Also this evening, we welcome Mr. Omir Rashid, our new student member of the board. He is a rising senior at Pikesville High School. He was elected by his peers and approved by the governor. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Darrell Williams and Mr. Omar Rashid. And now I invite you to rise <laughs> again and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to be led by Mackenzie Sample Thomas from Dogwood Elementary School. We will then remain standing for a moment of silence in recognition of those who have served education in Baltimore County. And I'd like to take a special moment to recognize Ms. Joanne Murphy, a former president of the Board of Education who recently passed. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is consideration of the July 9th, 2019 agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? There are no changes or additions to tonight's agenda. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Opens Meetings Act for the following reasons. To discuss one, the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. The minutes of the closed session and informational summary can be found on our website at www.bcps.org slash board slash informational dash summaries dot html. Our next item is selection of speakers. Sign up cards were available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting. Board practice limits to 10, the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the board. The completed sign up cards for this evening have been placed in this box and the first 10 drawn from the box will be our speakers for tonight during the public comment portion of the meeting. Of course, if fewer than 10 sign up cards are received, all who signed up will be permitted to speak. <laughs> Our first speaker is Mr. Preston Snendelzar. I'm sorry. Sned. I'm sorry. Snediger. Thank you. Our second speaker is Dr. Bosch Ferrone. Our third speaker is Diana Bergman. Our fourth speaker is Muhammad Jamil. Our fifth speaker is Lily Lee. Our sixth speaker is Nicole Landers. And that is the last speaker. So all speakers who signed up to speak will get a chance to speak tonight. Thank you. Microphone. 
Thank you. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by his staff. While we encourage public input on policy, programs, and practices within the purview of this board and the school system, this is not the proper form to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. We encourage everyone to utilize existing dispute resolution processes as appropriate. I remind everyone that inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. I ask you to observe the three minute clock, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the bell or see that time has expired. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time, and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related to public education in Baltimore County. If not selected, the public may submit their comments to the board members in hard copy or via email to boe at bcps.org. I now call on our stakeholder groups to speak. And this evening, as we have in past practice, uh, when we have elected officials come to visit us, we do allow them to speak. And this evening, we have with us County Councilman Wade Catch. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. I uh, had a meeting in my district to go to, but uh, after last night uh, meeting Dr. Williams, and Omar, I uh, decided I would uh, come here to uh, uh, congratulate both of them uh, in their new positions. And uh, talking to Dr. Williams, uh, I was thrilled to find out he is a former math teacher, <laughs> as, as I am and, and John Offerman is. I went to college with John. Uh, we graduated a few years ago. Uh, and we both started in the county school system the same year in 1970. Uh, Dr. Williams being a math teacher, and John, you know what I mean by this, we do think a little differently uh, about things. And, and uh, I think what, what I mean by that is uh, we tend to look at evidence, we tend to look at statistics and don't consider them an inconvenient truth. Uh, so um, I, I talked with Dr. Williams uh, last night and I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I, as I said, I've been here since 1970. The school system has had its peaks and valleys. And I know Dr. Williams, his goal is the peak and stay at the peak uh, while he's here. And uh, so uh, he has an awful lot to take a look at, a lot of plans to make. And I know that what he's gonna do is gonna be based on fact. Omar is going to that offer is still open, by the way. I won't go into the offer in front of everyone, but uh, uh, he's going to be uh, going to college in pre-med, and I volunteered myself. I said when he gets his, uh, becomes a doctor, if you stay in Maryland, you can count on me, because I, I'm very impressed uh, with you. And uh, I... Uh, a lot of you don't know, but I, uh, in 2013, had a meeting at my home with uh, the current county executive, uh, Dana Stein, who is the vice chair of uh, the Environmental and Transportation Committee, uh, Steve Lafferty, who is now the chairman of the county delegation, and we uh, I actually cooked and served, and they ate it all. But uh, the only disappointment was Dana Stein was going to bring cookies, and I thought he meant homemade. He just brought Pepperidge Farm, but oh well. Uh, but anyhow, we sat there uh, and talked about the school board and the fact that uh, we, at the time, were very frustrated with the school board. 
and felt as if the answer was an elected school board. This was in 2013. And of course, we all know of the uh, so-called disadvantages of an elected school board, and we took a look at it. We talked about the members of the House and Senate that we needed to work with. And uh, what happened was uh, there was a education subcommittee uh, with the county delegation. We met with the current speaker, Adrian Jones, and crafted a compromise where we have four appointed members and the seven elected members. So. Uh, after meeting Dr. Williams and Omar yesterday, I thought, well, I would divulge that story because the end result is more than I ever thought it would be. This, this has turned out to be fantastic. Uh, I know Kathleen Causey and Julie Hen, who is a former student of mine, so I take credit for Julie, um, have worked very hard, worked very hard when the new board took place to, to get everybody to work together for the same goal. And all I can say is that both Kathleen and Julie had such positive things to say about everybody on this board, uh, may not agree on issues, but everybody here cares about our students and wants every child in our Baltimore County school system to be successful, have that opportunity to be successful. When the budget came through for uh, this year, and I saw money for uh, guidance counselors, for psychologists, for social workers. I was thrilled because the year before that, I tried to do the same thing unsuccessfully because we are, as a school system, there are many challenges in front of us, and we need that support in order to help students that are coming in. So I thank you so much. Uh, there are a lot of citizens out there who study uh, the school budget very closely. Uh, they contact me and they have very good input based on facts. And uh, I, I appreciate what you all did in regard to the STAT program. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you in the future uh, to make this the very best school system in Maryland, in the country. And we can do it. And I certainly appreciate each and every one of you. And again, Dr. Williams, welcome, Omar. Welcome, and uh, so if you have any, yeah, you want to contact me, feel free to do that. I'm sure you all know how to do that. And thank you very much. Thank you. I now call on our stakeholder groups to speak, and first this evening from Baltimore County Student Council and the Stu Superintendent Student Advisory Council is Angela Kwan. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Superintendent Williams, and the Board of Education. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Angela Chen. I'm a rising senior at Delaney High School, and I'm the Baltimore County Student Council's president for the school year. Tonight, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Williams, our new superintendent, and my friend Omar Rashid, our new student member of the board. Right now, BCSC is planning its annual fall leadership camp, which is an overnight workshop retreat that takes place in the country of Maryland um, at River Valley Ranch in Manchester. And at this event, students from all across the county network, acquire valuable leadership skills, and participate in adventure activities. It's my favorite event of the year, and we're working hard to make this year's FLC go off without a hitch. 
Finally, I look forward to working with Dr. Williams and Omer on student initiatives such as mental health and safety, issues deeply felt by the student body. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Our next speaker for the evening is from the Teachers Association of Baltimore County, TABCO, and it's Ms. Abby Baton and Ms. Cindy Sexton. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Han, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. As most of you are aware, tonight is my last official Board of Education meeting as president of TABCO. I do retire on July 31st. That will be my last day. First, let me take a moment to officially welcome Dr. Williams to Baltimore County. I am expecting a great working relationship between TABCO and our new superintendent and know he will be a staunch supporter of collaboration and working for the best outcomes for our students and our staff, as well as welcoming Omar Rashid, our new SMOB. Um, I've met him several times already and have already been really impressed and I know you will do a wonderful job in that position. Second. I want to thank all of you for your willingness to work with me as president of TAPCO and all our members for the good of our students. We might not have always agreed on how to achieve all the myriad of goals or how to address all the issues, but I have always believed you had the best interests of our students in your hearts. I want to leave you with these few parting words. Always think of what is best for our children. Listen to the teachers and support staff in the field. They really understand what is happening and can help you understand the ramifications of the issues in the field. Our teachers are a most important resource available to our, in our efforts to assist our children to reach their best potential. Listen and truly hear what they have to say. Last, I'm going to turn the rest of my time over to, in, to Cindy Sexton, the incoming president of TAPCO. She is ready to hit the ground running and will do a wonderful job as president. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair, Woman Hen, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. It is with great hope and pleasure that I take over as the president of TAPCO. I look forward to working with all of you, as well as BCPS officials, administrators, educators, support staff, and all stakeholders. I ask you to work with TAPCO collaboratively so that together we can continue the hard work we've already begun, tackle the challenges facing us, and always keep our focus on what is best for the success of our students. Please allow TABCO to be a part of every conversation that affects our students and teachers. We are the boots on the ground. We can share what works, what doesn't, what our students need, and what our teachers need to be successful. Our way forward needs to include all of us as we are on this journey that will make BCPS a world-class school system. Thank you. Thank you both. Our next speaker for, for this evening is from the Council of Administrative and Supervisory Employees case, Mr. Tom DeHart. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Board Chair Causey, Vice Chair Han, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. Welcome, Dr. Williams, to your first official school board meeting. As you know, you're coming to Baltimore County at a time with many, many critical issues facing this board, the system, communities, and individual schools. However, by referencing Stephen Covey's Seek First to Understand, Then Be Understood, you've shown great, great wisdom in recognizing that there is far more right with Baltimore County Public Schools than there is wrong. As you're aware, perhaps the single most difficult but essential component of the success of any organization is consistency. Hall of Fame quarterback Roger Staubach said, in any team sport, the best teams have consistency and chemistry. This applies to team BCPS, and Case welcomes your stated desire, and frankly, we hope your demand for your three C's, communication, consistency, and coherence in the daily operation of our system. The members of Case hold positions that are the face of BCPS. They are the frontline leadership that is crucial to the success of our system, which is measured by the success of our students. And quite candidly, these folks are all too often the ones who are caught in the middle of inconsistent policies and practices. 
Case is excited that principals will be included on the teams you are creating in your 100-day entry plan around strategic leadership, relationship building, and professional development. The knowledge, experience, and insight gained in their position will be very helpful as you continue to get to know the system. Again, welcome, Dr. Williams. Case looks forward to working, establishing, and maintaining a long and collaborative relationship with you. Have a good night. And our next speaker from PTA Council of Baltimore County is President Ms. Jane Lee. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Hen, Dr. Williams, welcome. And to our student, I am especially proud since I am a member of the Pikesville High School PTSA and board members. I am just back from Columbus, Ohio in our national convention where I am happy to say we passed a resolution on financial literacy and supporting that all students learn financial literacy while still in school. I also can say that we held interesting elections, some going five and six ballots. And we will be having our Maryland PTA convention in Linthicum at the end of this month, which will be even more interesting because we're doing a complete bylaws revision. I spent 12 hours in committee meeting this last Saturday. Uh, this is a new year for us. July 1st is the beginning of our PTA year, so we are now hitting the ground running. We are planning to hold area meetings in each area of the county to work with our local units, get them into compliance, because our goal is to have every single unit in compliance so they can participate in our reflections program this coming year. We will be holding a meeting in August to set our own goals and planning, training, and networking and getting our members together. We look forward to meeting with Dr. Williams. We would like to do so on a regular basis. Um, I did get two text messages on the way here, one from a committee chair of our Health and Safety Committee reminding me that I need to ask Dr. Williams to kindly include her in any committees that have anything to do with health and safety as well as Chairwoman Causey. And the other was from a great partner of ours, Laurie Taylor Mitchell and the Student Support Network. We would like to get together to, with you to discuss hungry children because hungry children cannot learn and we want to work with you on making sure all children come to school prepared and with a belly full. Uh, we will be having meetings the first Thursday of every month and you are all invited to any of those meetings. We hope you will attend and we have our general meetings. Other than that, I need to apologize to anyone including students, teachers, PTA members in the public who have sent me emails that have gone unanswered the last week. For the first time in a long time, I had to take a step back and be a mother. Unfortunately, my baby, and by baby I mean 25-year-old, had an accident with an angry dog, and we have been going through rabies vaccines for the last week. So I have not answered anyone because sometimes we have to be a mother first. But I will be back to bringing you all the comments next meeting, and we'll catch up on that as I do at most meetings. Dr. Williams, you'll learn that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And now is the time for public comment, and our first speaker for the evening is Mr. Preston Snedegar. We have the overflow room is full, so Mr. Smith will go and check for our speaker there. Thank you, he'll be on his way. Good evening and welcome. How you doing? Uh, I was here last month. My name is Preston Snedeker. Uh, and I was concerned uh, basically on the sign-in box, and I thought it was outrageous the way it works. But since there's nobody here, I get to speak. That's, not, that's one of the issues I had to do first. Now we're on the second issues. I'm a businessman. I've been a businessman for years, okay? 
I hear all the good things that Baltimore County's done. There's a lot of things, okay? And I know the decision makers. You are all the decision makers, okay? I don't think a lot of things that are brought to you in a proper perspective, okay? I don't think the construction's doing done right, okay? I don't think the accounting's done right. I have a CPA license, I have an MBA from Hopkins, okay? I have two young grandchildren that are going to school here soon, and I'm not happy what I see. I'm a little emotional with them, okay? I'll calm down. The fixes are relatively easy. You need a person like me who goes after them. I attack them with a vengeance you couldn't believe. Okay, I'll do that for my grandkids. I'll go to the building guy and say, why are you doing this? They don't use standard products. Okay, everything's a little castle. Why? Makes no sense. You can make them look different. Okay, they don't even coke the rebars. You probably don't know what I'm talking about. I forgot to bring my rebars for you. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of things that need repair. Okay, first of all, you need the money that I can save you from the, going after the inequities and not best standard practices to fix the video to cut out while I was being announced to come here and speak. It stopped four or five or seven or eight times if I lost count, okay? But there's a lot of things that can be fixed. There's a lot of people that are willing to help. But I'm not big on all the administration. I used to do that, okay? My best meeting was five minutes. I love that meeting, okay? I know that you have a lot more things to do, okay? But I'm offering my assistance, okay? You are the decision makers. And here's what's good about it. One typewritten page with recommendations, substantiating documentation will be attached to the back. I don't write more than one page. Now, I mean, and I wonder about the, uh, the little stakeholder thing. Would I've got an answer? Should I get an answer? You know, I don't know your administration, and I know the book's this long, and you didn't do this, and you didn't do that, you didn't do that. I don't really care about all that. I don't. I care about my two grandkids. Now, you're the new superintendent, Mr. Williams. All right, I'll give you a gift. Okay, math teacher, sixth graders, put your hand down. Move the index finger of your thumb over. One, count one. Draw a triangle. Make it a right triangle. Three, four, five, that's two. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's how easy teaching is sometimes. But the odds of that getting to the teachers, okay, I used to teach for a few years. Well, you have to give it to your head department. You have to give it to them. They'll give it to them. They'll give it to them. Again, look at them. Question for you. Why don't they have a central database that has the best lesson plans? And each time a, a teacher adds to that where he beats somebody or she beats somebody, they're given credit for that. Everybody writes a separate lesson plan. Why? Most inefficient thing I've ever saw. I've done it. You know? Our next speaker for the evening is Dr. Bosch Verone. Madam Chair, can I pass this to the superintendent? You can hand it over there to our staff. Thank you. Uh, my presentation is about it. So. It's about okay. <laughs> is, Thank you. Good evening to all. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Williams, welcome. Mr. Rashid, welcome. And of course, welcome to all of you. Um, our students are like the flower that I brought as a gift to you. It needs nourishment. And if it got sick, it needs the right doctor, right prescription. So every superintendent, every superintendent before you talked about diversity, talked about inclusion, talked about equity and equality. Very little is done. Dr. Berger in about 1995 closed the schools on the Jewish holiday because that's his holiday. Dr. Hirston came in. He was a status quo superintendent. He actually gave the impression wrongfully to all of us that it is a state-sponsored holiday, which is false. Then this past June, in this calendar, Professional Day was supposed to be coinciding with Eid al-Futr. And the school administration basically made it an open day. School administration sacrificed our culture, our faith, 
and did not do the same thing for our Jewish cousins. If that's not really a discrimination, I honestly don't know what discrimination is. is. Another observation is that over the past 15 years, I yet to see one Muslim teacher come in and be an employee. I yet to see a Sikh teacher with a turban. There might be some. I don't know. I don't have statistics, all right? But it's such a drastic ban on Muslims in Baltimore County public school that is hidden, clandestine, and is being done in a very consistent way. So, you know, you are our hope. You know, you are our hope for the buildings and for the people inside. Our students, and I'm really glad to see Mr. Rashid here, our students are really not different than any other faith or national origin. And all what I'm asking is really for this board and every member, and you as our administrator, is to treat the Jewish holidays equal to the Muslim holidays. Equal must mean equal. It cannot be parsed. It cannot be manipulated. It cannot be done in a smart way. It really cannot. And my personal hope is that you would implement that after 25 years of me being involved with the school system. It's about time. I thank you and welcome. Thank you, Dr. Brown. And our next speaker for the evening is Ms. Diana Bergman. Good evening and welcome. Summertime, I'm so excited. And congratulations, Mr. Williams, I should say Dr. Williams. Um, first, I wanna give a shout out, happy birthday to Ms. Parsu. She's not here today, but it's her birthday. Um, and Dr. Williams, you were my assistant principal back in 1997 in Springbrook High School. So it's flashback time. I'm taking it back to 97, back in Springbrook and what we did in Montgomery County, because this is going to be awesome. Let me tell you, we had um, the Hispanic Assembly that our um, late Mr. Um, Bean used to um, do our Spanish assembly, our Hispanic assembly. We took great pride in doing that culturally. We had international night for everybody. We had black history. We used to do these beautiful assemblies in Springbrook High School. And Dr. Williams knows what I'm talking about. We were such a diverse high school. And with all the years and experience that he has now, the potential of what he could absolutely do for Team BCPS. I am so excited. So welcome to the family. I am just full of joy. And I hope that everybody's getting ready because big shout out to all of our administrators. They're doing a lot of hiring. I know the HR department, they're working really hard. You see all those people back there, they're getting promoted. So that means we're getting more staff, so it's awesome. And I am just so confident of what the future is going to look like for Baltimore County and how we're going to make Baltimore County better. I've been saying this message since the campaign with our former student board member. Have you met my friend Johnny? He's a county executive now. He's awesome. And education is just going to be world class in the state of Maryland. I absolutely believe that. Now. I gotta give you a heads up. I know probably nobody wants to tell you like the in and outs so of who to be careful. First of all, on the west side, don't mess with the Delta girls, okay? They're awesome, just don't get on their bad side. Uh, number two, you guys have to come tour with me to Lansdowne High School. So you have to have a full tour of Lansdowne High School. It is our poster child. So we gotta focus. 2020, we gotta go to Annapolis, ask for money to make sure we build these schools. We need healthy schools. And we need to make sure that Baltimore County moving forward doesn't just hand out an invitation and invite everybody to the dance. We have to ask everybody in the party to be part of a better Baltimore County. So thank you. 
Thank you. And our next speaker for the evening is Dr. Muhammad Jamil. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Peace, blessings, and good evening to all. I'm very proud to first welcome Omar Rashid. He's the member who has not come just because he happens to be a minority. He comes with a high meritorious record. And that is to be acknowledged, and I welcome you. Dr. Williams, you're welcome to this board. I was one of the PTA presidents in this system when you graduated from high school. All three of my children graduated from BCPS when you moved to Montgomery County. The point is that during all this time, I have seen and experienced the seismic change that has taken place in BCPS. It became a minority majority school just recently compared to Montgomery County. My hope is that you shall be a bold and a strong leader. In my naval training, I was taught that a good officer is never popular. And a popular officer is never a good officer. Only the history makes them popular. You have to be an unpopular superintendent of this school system if you want to fix the inequities that exist that I have observed since your high school graduation. Councilman Kaj mentioned about peaks and valleys. Yes, there are peaks and valleys, but the valleys keep on getting wider. You have to deep, take the deep interest and dig into the facts without being popular, without trying to maintain the status quo. The Muslims have been standing here many a times. We talk about numbers, math, Numbers seem to count, but we do not have a mob mentality that we should fill up this room every day in every meeting to only ask for justice, equal justice, equality for Muslims. All the talk about secularity, about the rationality, the numbers game does not amount to justice. Where there is no justice, I hope that you shall look into it and make the equitable distribution of resources to different minorities on equal basis. I thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Our next speaker for the evening is Ms. Lily Lee. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Dear BOE members, my name is Lily Lee, a parent of BCPS students, and I'm here to welcome our new superintendent, Dr. Williams. With the new, with the new superintendent, Dr. Williams, coming to our Baltimore County Public Schools, we, parents and community members, are now seeing a new hope, a new beginning for our children. Our new hope is our children will truly be the focus of BCPS system, but not the tools or machines for some personal or political agenda, like in the prior, prior superintendent's era and its follow-up. With a new time and new era coming now, I want to bring some attention to, to guidance counselors in middle and high schools. From my personal experience 
and complaints from some of my friends. I have to say that most of our guidance counselors are doing their job, but there are a few who are doing some power abuse or doing things in violation of BCPS guidelines. So nowadays, BCPS middle and high schools have widespread school violence issues. I don't know if counselors are just overburdened by these widespread school violence things, or they just want to pick on easy targets. Some counselors don't want to put efforts to physically violent students, but instead turn extreme attention to students who are not saying political correct things. The guidance counselors and his or her de delegates called out the names of those not politically correct students in public during lunch sessions to humiliate them and damage their self-dignity. That's the abuse of power. That's totally against the guidelines from, co from counselor's office. The guidelines said something like, counselors should talk to the student in person, but not in public especially not purposely humiliating them in public. Teenagers are teenagers. They are difficult. Due to their body chemicals, teenagers are especially sensitive to the ways they are treated, especially in public or when other students are around. And also, we all know that the school counselors are paid much, much more than regular teachers because their job requires more loving and professional treatings. So I'm urging BCPS to put the uppermost important requirement when hiring a new counselor, a loving heart. I know we need more and more counselors in our schools, but we need good ones, not bad ones. Also, I'm urging BCPS to review, to give new counselors extensive training about how to work with students, especially the middle and the high school students due to the sensitivity of their age and their special phase of mental perception and development. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our final public comment speaker for the evening is Ms. Nicole Landers. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Welcome, Dr. Williams and Omar. Um, you mostly know me, but for Dr. Williams and Omar, you don't. I typically come and talk about school violence. It's not what I'm here for tonight. Uh, Dr. Williams, my children were removed from the school system by me and my husband last year after my daughter was sexually assaulted in the fifth grade, and my son was bullied so severely he became suicidal in the fourth. When I removed them because the county didn't take action, I placed them in a small private school my learning curve has been immense over this year as I learned just how far behind they were. They were AB students in the public school, in a blue ribbon school. In the private school, they were years behind their um, appropriate progressive track for their age. Upon research, I've come up with a lot of findings that I'm deeply concerned about as a parent and a taxpayer in this county. I want to understand why nearly 61% of the students in the fourth grade are not reading proficient. I want to understand why amongst our county's eighth grade students, only 31% are capable of getting a B or higher in algebra. I want to understand how the SAT scores have dropped from 2015 at a 1322 to 2018 at a 977. I want to understand why 75% of applicants to CCBC are not able to pass a seventh grade AccuPlacer exam. Most of these applicants are coming from BCPS. I pay one third less the cost that you're paying per student in this county. And in one year's time, my students have gone from not being able to recognize an, an adjective or an adverb to writing an MLA format and deriving Latin. It makes no sense to me why our students in the county are so far behind or why I should pay the taxes and then pay again just to be able to get my children educated at a college-ready level. It's the onus of responsibility on all of us, the board, the, the staff, 
the teachers, the administrators, to do better than this by our kids. Education is the backbone of our community, and if we don't do something about this, we will lose our community. Our students can't read, they can't do math. Dr. Williams, my students, my, my children, they didn't know their basic math facts. They couldn't long divide. I had to hire two tutors this year to bring them up. It should not be the case. I implore you as you're learning to broad scope your, your, in, your investigations so that you can improve this for the students. Thank you. That concludes our public comment portion. We now move forward with the uh, opportunity for community members to comment on board policy. So we have related to public comment on proposed changes to policy 1260, community relations, community involvement, school volunteers, and the first speaker that signed up is Ms. Diana Bergman. What's the first policy? 1260. 1260. Well, I like that the language on the policy is short like it should be. Um, one of the things that I would suggest, and this is part of what happens with the, with the rule, are um, training videos for volunteers in BCPS um, is only available in one language in English. And we have a lot of parents in our school system that speak different languages. I think it's over 90-something languages spoken throughout Baltimore County schools. So um, everybody has to look at the same video. And then after you do the video, you get your certificate for volunteer training. The problem that we have in BCPS is that we're looking at a video and getting our certificate in some of our communities. and. We don't even understand the language. I have a very large Hispanic community in the southwest portion of Baltimore County, and we have to do these video training, and then we run into problems when the parents have volunteered, done the video, got the certificate, takes the child on the field trip, because don't forget, about two school years ago, they lost my kid at the zoo. And um, we did not have a plan of understanding what we were supposed to do at the time. So to have the whole community feel included, I think we need to look at the video and do a, an update. The video's outdated. We need to revise that video for the volunteer training. And we also have to do a voiceover in at least some of the major spoken languages in our county. We just want to make sure the message is being communicated clearly to everybody that's part of our, our, our county. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker for Policy 1260 is Dr. Bosch Faron. Madam Chair, I have very brief comments that apply to all of them. Can I do it at the end or together? It saves time instead of getting You can do it right now and if it saves time. And then, Ms. Bergman, if you want to stay seated because you're on the next policy as well. Two minutes. Maybe I can save the rest of the minutes for later. <laughs> Good evening to all. Um, Basically, I like to keep my comments really general for your thoughts. And it's really triggered by the 8315 and the 1260 volunteerism. So one, one point is um, I really believe and I really like to see board members give their feedback to the public. So you know I have been basically here for a long time. I write emails, I come in here, and I really rarely get anything in response. And I think this is really a shared uh, thing among other uh, members. In the same token, the stakeholders, which are supposed to be representing the public, they need to be more visible. I really don't know how the policies are effective in that. I, I know policies are written by our esteem lawyers, all right, for a good reason. But at the end of the day, I have been here for almost 15 years. I come in 
early, early on, and usually eight, nine, ten stakeholders come and speak. Now, if it is three or four, and oftentimes it's really soft, it's thank you, appreciation, stuff like that. Somehow, our policies need to strengthen our system of stakeholders where they are accountable, they know what they need to do and what they should do, and of course they are holding the board accountable too, and it's a two-way system. Last but not least, I really thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> thank you. <coughs> so our next policy is policy 3230, non-instructional services, purchasing, qualification of vendors, and Ms. Bergman. So policy 3230, again, is very simple to the point and directs what the rules should be. I'm excited when I see policies that are written as such. Um, regarding um, the qualification of vendors, I just want to make sure that each schoolhouse has the opportunity um, to, especially our Title I schools, um, I understand they have to meet certain guidelines. but when they're trying to stretch that dollar to get a vendor to get more bang for their buck, um, in the past they've only been allowed to look at certain vendors and that was it. So if you could get the same product that you needed for a schoolhouse for 750 kids, um, you had to pay twice or three times as much. Um, so I would like to make sure that um, we give all the vendors, especially local vendors, the opportunity to supply um, contract agreements for BCPS. Thank you. Thank you. You can stay right there because you are also the next speaker for policy 8130, which is internal board policies, organization formulation. Okay, this policy is really, 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 really long. <laughs> Um, so I didn't get a, a complete chance, but the overview of it is I do think that when, the, when we're looking at the formula for the internal board policy that we have to include um, everybody's voice, all organizations um, related to education as decision makers and we have to make sure that our teachers and supporting staff have a voice. They haven't had a voice in the past. There's been decisions in the past that were made and nobody even bothered to ask them what your input and they're the boots on the ground in our system. Same thing with parents. So that's all I got to say about that. Thanks. You are also signed up to speak on the uh, final policy, which is policy 8315, internal board policies, operations, meetings, participation by the public. Oh, well, I think what I said earlier applied to this one. <laughs> so yes, again, um, all the stakeholders in the community should have an accurate voice of the community. Um, I also will add, our communities look very different. I've been living in Baltimore County for almost nine years now. Um, this 2020 of August will be nine years that I've been a Baltimore County resident with my family. And my community looks completely different. And um, we have a lot of new organizations that have come up and they're not part of the conversation and they should be because they're part of our community and our school system. So, um, I think that should be taken in consideration. It should be very clear um, how we define stakeholders and not leave it as broad um, out there. Thanks. Thank you. That concludes our speakholder portion. I do want to make an addition to an earlier announcement that earlier this evening when the board met in closed session pursuant to the Opens Meetings Act, we also met for item number eight, which is to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. So that brings us to the next item of the, on the agenda, item F, superintendent's report. And for that, I welcome Dr. Williams. Thank you and good evening. <clears throat> I would like to start by thanking the board, students and families, and community members of team BCPS for welcoming me, me to this role. I thank Ms. Berman for not bringing pictures back in 1997 also. 
I look forward to getting to know you as I travel around the county. Uh, look for my new blog, Super Steps, for a peek at where I've been so far. As we begin our work together, it's important for you to know where my focus lies, and that's on high quality teaching and learning in every classroom. You will hear me talk about raising the bar, closing the gaps, and preparing for our future because I had the benefit of teachers who held me to high standards while they provided support. I want to make sure that every one of our students has the opportunity to succeed in school and throughout their lives. So my first meeting with students uh, occurred on Monday. Part of helping students succeed is understanding what is important to, to them. On my first day last week, I was able to talk to a diverse cross-section of our young people. They brought forth a range of ideas and issues, and their insight and feedback will be a powerful guiding force as we move forward. To Omar, one of the students I had a chance to learn from on two occasions last week is our new student member of the board, Omar Rashid. Omar is a rising senior at Pikesville High School. He was appointed to this role by the governor after completing a successful application and interview and being elected by a forum of 100 middle and high school students. Omar is president and co-founder of the Pikesville High School Environmental Club. He's a member of the National Honor Society, National Social Studies Honor Society, as well as the school's AdVid and DECA programs. Omar has been part of the school's Math Olympiad, soccer, and Model UN teams. Outside of school, he volunteers with the Baltimore County Fire Department, Johns Hopkins Hospital, and Helping Hands USA. He stays busy. He has also helped to co-found and serve as president of a group dedicated to HIV and AIDS awareness and support. Welcome, Omar. Thank you for taking the initiative to serve, and I look forward to working with you in the future. As you know, there's no downtown, downtime, downtown, downtime in the field of education. Our staff and leaders are working diligently throughout the summer to prepare facilities, plan instruction and curriculum, and hire staff and leaders. This week, we also kick off the extended year learning and the summer visual arts camp, as well as continued professional learning opportunities. To that end, I'd like to wish you a happy National Summer Learning Week. I once again thank this community for the warm welcome. I appreciate your support as we make a difference in the lives of over 115,000 students. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. The next agenda item is my chair report. It is my hope for a positive, enjoyable start to the summer for our employees, our students, our families, even for our 12-month staff that continue to work hard but at a different pace, that everyone gets to see friends, spend time with family, enjoying nature and hobbies, but keep reading, keep learning. Since the last meeting, June 18th, where we introduced Dr. Williams, there have been many board and new superintendent happenings. Dr. Williams was introduced and spoke to principals and schoolhouse leaders at the BCBS Leadership Academy. He spent his first official day on the job with students. I was honored to bring greetings to the two-day Baltimore County Public School Safe Schools Conference that included, again, our schoolhouse leaders and also the many BCPS staff that are involved in school safety and climate. Dr. Williams and several board members attended, including Lily Rowe, Makita Scott, Cheryl Pasteur, Rod McMillian, and Lisa Mack. The Safe Schools Conference included an award ceremony acknowledging the amazing partnership that we have with our school resource officers. We also heard from an inspirational and motivational speaker and trauma survivor, Ms. Tanir Kane. She delivered a difficult but important message regarding trauma-informed care, encouraging us that while there is breath, there is hope. And for many children, all it takes is one person to help them succeed. 
Vice Chair Julie Hen and I also participated in our first agenda planning meeting with Dr. Williams and staff. The next day, Ms. Hen, Dr. Williams and I were joined by several board members for the swearing in of Baltimore County Public New student member of the board, Omir Rashid. We were also fortunate to attend the swearing in of Towson High's Noreen Bodwi as the state board student member. These are tremendous accomplishments for both these students. While much less formal, but important nonetheless, Vice Chair Julie Hen and I enjoyed riding on a fire engine at the Towson Fourth of July Parade with Dr. Williams. He was a great sport on a very hot day, and he was well received by the community. Just last evening, we also hosted a meet and greet reception for Dr. Williams with our county and state elected officials, and we appreciate that so many were able to attend. We also appreciate the support that they've given to Dr. Williams and their continued support for public education in Baltimore County. Moving forward, the board will support Dr. Williams as he works through his 100-day plan that is available on our website. While he evaluates the system, brings recommendations to the board for strategic planning, resource allocation, and improvements. We look forward to developing a highly effective partnership in a paradigm of transparency, collaboration, and accountability that is always focused on the needs of our students. The superintendent and the board are in the process of planning a board retreat for early August. It will include many, many things, including reviewing the almost 2,000 comments that were collected during our superintendent search community input process. There are many challenges ahead, as Dr. Williams and the school system plan for school opening on September 3rd, but I am confident that everyone's going to rise to that occasion. I would like to conclude with a message to all employees. The four-year appointment of Dr. Williams brings a fresh set of eyes and ideas to BCPS while also bringing stability. We realize employees in all areas have been through many changes in recent years. Some of these changes made many feel that they were hampered in their ability to provide the best support to students. So we hear you, we support you, we recognize that there is no we without each and every one of you. So please continue to reach out to Dr. Williams and the board with your feedback. You can always reach us at boe at bcps.org. Finally, let me echo the wise words of Mother Teresa. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not yet come. We have only today. So let us begin. Thank you. And our next item on the agenda is the student board members report. Good evening, Team BCPS. My name is Omar Rashid, and I am your new student member of the Board of Education for the 2019-2020 school year. I would like to start my, my, my first mob report by thanking everyone who has helped and welcomed me throughout this long and exciting process. I moved to Baltimore County two short years ago with my dad from Ethiopia seeking better education, and I'd have to say BCPS has done a lot for me as a student, and I want every student to feel the warmth and the difference this school's system can make, whether it's from a single teacher or any BCPS staff. I am ready and thrilled to be a voice, a bridge, and a friend to all 114,000 plus students here at BCPS. As a student member of the board, my job is to represent the students and bring their best interests to the board, and I need us all to make sure to remember who we are working for with every decision we make, which is none other than the students. I am here to represent the diverse body of BCPS and to make every student, no matter their religion, race, or socioeconomic background, feel included and understands their school system. I am also excited to work with our new superintendent with whom I have already had several meetings with and shared student feedback on facilities, mental health, bullying, as well as my initiatives on AP rigor, equity, and closing the achievement gap. Our year is just getting started and I am here for the better of all BCPS students. Also, stay tuned for Open Mic with Omar, which will be my new show where we will use it to talk about different topics with a variety of people to reach a wider audience. Follow me on social media to stay updated and I look forward to getting to work. Thank you and have a good rest of the summer.
Thank you so much. The next item of business is unfinished business consideration of board policies. Members of the board, the policy review committee asks that the board accept this report of the committee's recommendation to amend the following policies. Policy 1270, parent and family engagement. Policy 3720, behavior threat assessment. Policy 4104, technology acceptable use policy for authorized users. Policy 6202, technology acceptable use policy for students. These recommendations have been presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit I. The committee considered public comments received during the board's public meeting on June 11th, 2019. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendations of the board's policy review committee? Thank you, Ms. Mack. No second is required. Is there any discussion or comments from the board? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. The next item, item J, new business, personnel matters. For that, we call forward Dr. Mayo. Good evening, Dr. Mayo. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Dr. Williams, members of the board. I would like board uh, consent for the following personnel matters, retirements, resignations, leaves, certificated appointments, and Southeast Area Education Advisory Council appointment. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits J1 through J5? Thank Thank you. The next item of business is administrative appointments. Thank you. The next item of business is administrative appointments, and I call on Dr. Williams. Madam Chair and members of the board, I would like to bring forward for your approval the following administrative appointments. There are 20. Principal of Featherbed. Lane Elementary School, Principal of Hebville Elementary School, Principal of Metal Wood Educational Center, Principal of Northwest Academy of Health Sciences, Principal of Riverview Elementary School, Principal of Warren Elementary School, Assistant Principal, Bear Creek Elementary School, Assistant Principal, Colgate Elementary School, Assistant Principal, Eastern Technical High School, Assistant Principal of Featherbed Lane Elementary School, Assistant Principal Kenwood High School, Assistant Principal Overly High School, Assistant Principal of Owings Mills Elementary School, Assistant Principal of Scott's Branch Elementary School, Assistant Principal St Stimmers Run Middle School, Assistant Principal of Westtown Elementary School, Assistant Principal Woodholm Elementary School, the Coordinator of Career Development and Youth Apprenticeship, Senior Operations Supervisor, HVACBA Office of Facilities, Support Services Supervisor, Language Arts Office of English Language Arts. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in Exhibit K-1? Thank you, Ms. Mack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Yes, yes. Dr. Williams? So as I call your name, please come forward or raise your hand, whatever may be appropriate. <laughs> Um, this is in alphabetical order. Uh, coming forward is Patricia Angelini, who is the new principal of Warren Elementary School. Thank you. 
We added a special touch of having the pictures posted so everyone can see. She brings forth 26 years of uh, experience in Baltimore County. Supporting her tonight are her husband, Nick Angelini, and daughter, Sophia and Olivia Angelini. Thank you. Mr. Zachary Clark, Assistant Principal, Overly High School. He <laughs> Six years of experience in Baltimore County. Supporting him tonight are his wife, Laura Clark, Principal Monica Sample, Overly High School, Assistant Principal Brittany Keefe, Overly High School, Assistant Principal Kevin Watley, Overly High School, and Assistant Principal Robert Covert, Hereford High School. Congratulations. Next, we have Jennifer Conrad, the Assistant Principal of Owings Mills Elementary School. She brings to us with 23 years of Sir Baltimore County. Supporting her tonight are the following, her husband, Pat Conrad, daughter, Gwen, and daughter, Devin. Former principal, Chet Scott, Owings Mills Elementary School. Current principal, Scott Conway, Owings Mill Elementary School. And fellow assistant principal, Andrea Butler, Owings Mill Elementary School. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Jordan F Felderman, new principal of Hebville Elementary School. He has eight years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting him tonight is Rochelle Archelis, the principal of Woodlawn Middle School. Congratulations. Next, we have Colleen Fitzmaurice, the principal of River Hill Elementary School. She brings nine years of experience in Baltimore County, and supporting her tonight are her parents, Mary and John Fitzmaurice. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Christine Gibson, the assistant principal of Colgate Elementary School. She brings, yes. She brings seven years of experience in Baltimore County. Supporting her tonight are the following, her husband, Joe Gibson, and brother, Mitchell Whitlock. <laughs> Next, we have Michael Jones, principal of Northwest Academy of Health Sciences. He has 10 years of service in Baltimore County. Supporting him tonight is his wife, Kia Jones, daughter, Harrison Jones, who is a BCPS student, and mother, Gwen Wheatley. Congratulations. <laughs> Kathleen Kilball, the assistant principal at Bear Creek Elementary School. She has 10 years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting her tonight are the following. Her husband, Tom Kilbaugh, and Principal Matt Corner from Bear Creek Elementary School. <laughs> Next, we have Barry King. Welcome, Barry, to Baltimore County. He's new to Baltimore County. Supporting him or not, from a distance, his family vacationing in Ocean City and they are unable to be. <laughs> Welcome, Barry King. I'm sure they're watching online. <laughs> Kristen Loscum, if I say it right, assistant principal at Scott's Branch Elementary School. She has 16.5 years of experience in Baltimore County. And Tonight are her husband, Mark Loscombe, and Principal Lauren Tillman from Scott's Branch Elementary School. Congratulations. <laughs> James Marth, I hope I said that right, James, <laughs> Assistant Principal of Featherbed Lane Elementary School, 15 years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting him tonight is his wife, Allison Marth. Next, we have Vincent Piscopo, the assistant principal at St Stimmers Run Middle School. 
Is he here? There he is. 12 years of service from Baltimore County. And supporting him tonight is his wife, Carla Piscopo. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Brian Powell, the assistant principal at Eastern Technical High School. There's Brian. <laughs> Welcome to Baltimore County. Supporting him tonight, his wife, Joanna Powell, and, assist and principal, Michelle Anderson, who is the principal of Eastern Technical High School. <laughs> Next, we have Aaron Ray, the assistant principal at Kenwood High School. She brings 18 years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting her tonight are her mother, Patricia Ray, and principal, Brian Powell, at Kenwood High School. Next, we have Philip Robinson, the principal at Meadowwood Ele Education Center. He has 14 years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting him tonight is his wife, Grace Robinson. <laughs> Next, we have Anthony Schultz, the assistant principal at Westtown Elementary School. He has 10 years of service in Baltimore County, and supporting him tonight are the following. His wife, Anna Fitzgibbon, father and mother, David and Maureen Schultz, sister, Anna Grace Bennett, brother-in-law, Jeff Bennett, mother-in-law, father-in-law, Chuck and Janine Fitzgibbon. <laughs> Next, we have John Supek the Senior Operations Supervisor, John, there he is. <laughs> Welcome to Baltimore County Public Schools. Supporting, supporting John tonight is his wife, Heather Supic. <laughs> Next we have Alona, Alana Thompson, you can correct me if you need. Alana, thank you. Assistant Principal at Woodholm Elementary School with seven years of experience in Baltimore County. <laughs> Supporting her tonight, her husband, William Thompson. I hope that's her husband right there. <laughs> Stepson, Joseph Thompson, and stepson's friend, Aaron Hippolyte. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Next, we have Michelle Webster, principal of Featherbed Lane Elementary School. She brings 24 years of service in Baltimore County. Supporting her tonight are the following, her husband, Jeff Webster, sons, Tyler and Brendan, and assistant principal, Maria Ramos, from Hillcrest Elementary School. Congratulations. And last but not least, Jody Wicks. Supervisor of Language Arts, Secondary Office of English 12 Secondary. She brings 16 years of service in Baltimore County. And supporting her tonight are the following. Her husband, Andrew Wicks. Her son, Drew Wicks. Mother, Joanne Fleming. Coordinator, Gail Green from the Office of Secondary English Language Arts. And Interim Executive Director of Academics, Megan Shea, Department of Academics. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I first would like to thank the community superintendents, the cabinet, and particularly HR. This is a lot of work in terms of the process and filling these vacancies. And I just want to say thank you. I commend you of all your work. And to the new appointees, congratulations. You did it. <laughs> Thank you very much and congratulations to everyone. I believe they're gonna do photos out, out in the hallway or in the overflow room. And Mr. Nussbaum, our next item is new business. And of Action course I'm taken clearing in closed out the room session. as usual. And as usual, <laughs> Mr. Nussbaum clears the room. Thank okay. you. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> we'll take just a moment.
Okay, Mr. Nussbaum? Thank you. Earlier this evening, the board considered six appeals regarding confidential student matters in your quasi-judicial capacity. All six were considered on the record. At this time, it would be appropriate to confirm the actions taken in those matters in closed session. They are summary affirmances 19-29, 19-35, 19-56, 19-61, 19-62, 19-63, 19-64, 19-65, 19-66, 19-67, 19-68, 19-69, 19-70, 19-71, 19-72, 19-73, 19-74, 19-75, 19-76, 19-77, 19-78, 19-79, 19-80, 19-81, 19-82, 19-83, 19-84, 19-85, 19-86, 19-87, 19-88, 19-89, 19-90, 19-91, 19-92, 19-93, 19-94, 19-95, 19-96, 19-97, 19-98, 19-99, 19-2000, 19-2001, 19-2002, 19-2003, 19-2004, 19-2005, 19-2006, 19-2007, 19-2008, 19-2009, 19-2010, 19-2011, 19-2012, 19-2013, 19-2014, 19-2015, 19-2016, 19-2017, 19-2018, 19-2019, 19-2020, 19-2021, 19-2022, 19-2023, 19-2024, 19-2025, 19-2026, 19-2027, 19-2028, 19-2029, 19-2030, 19-2031, 19-2032, 19-2033, 19-2034, 19-2035, 19-2036, 19-2037, 19-2038, 19-2039, 19-2040, 19-2041, 19-2042, 19-2043, 19-2044, 19-2045, 19-2046, 19-2047, 19-2048, 19-2049, 19-2050, 19-2051, 19-2052, 19-2053, 19-2054, 19-2055, 19-2056, 19-2057, 19-2058, 19-2059, 19-2060, 19-2061, 19-2062, 19-2067, 19-2068, 19-2069, 19-2070, 19-2071, 19-2072, 19-2073, 19-2074, 19-2075, 19-2076, 19-2077, 19-2078, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-2079, 19-
So our next slide, just to um, center everyone in the work, uh, what you have here is a map of Baltimore County schools. And um, the red dots identify students who are in a wait list. Blue dots identify students who have been accepted to watershed. And you can see that the spread of students um, really does fan out around the full county. And therefore, as a result of the widespread, we don't have any singular Baltimore County school that draws so many students that it affects staffing at any of our other schools. And in terms of our informational updates, as I said before, our last board update um, was provided in May. And at that time, we brought you an update as to where curriculum and development was at that time and facilities at that time. Tonight, where our update will focus on facilities as they are currently, uh, information technology, and student enrollment. Um, good evening. Uh, with uh, the facility status as of July. Um, you may remember uh, that BCBS and Watershed, we've been communicating about the facility specifically. Um, we had mentioned in May that the health suite was one of the sole remaining issues regarding facility suitability. Um, and also wanted to remind the board that the facility must be deemed suitable for instruction by BCPS in order for the school to open. Um, based on our current understanding and a recent visit, permits have been accepted and renovations are underway. The health suite was a remaining area of concern Concern. On June 2nd, 2019, Watershed provided responses to our feedback on their construction plans. BCBS then responded to Watershed on June 13th, stating that the school's proposed solution to the health suite requirement was not acceptable. Watershed proposed providing a sound reducing curtain in order to create the required private consultation space. This solution is not in accordance with Comar, which requires a separate room for private consultation and for use as a designated school health services professional's office. Watershed was notified that the health suite needed to be renovated to meet the requirements of state law. On June 22nd, following a meeting in which that, that included BCBS staff, Watershed leadership, and MSDE, MSDE informed Watershed and BCBS that despite system concerns, MSDE would be waiving the requirement for a private consultation space. So with that requirement waived, only discussions around food, and nutri food nutrition, and kitchen equipment remain. Um, BCBS staff and health department staff from Baltimore County have a final inspection um, and my records say that that's scheduled for July 10th so within the next week um, we have a health um, inspection on the kitchen. In terms of information technology, I wanted to share an update on BCBS and Watershed um, discussions. Uh, at this time, Watershed has decided that the school will not use the BCBS wide area network or our internet connections and fiber. Our wide area network and fiber provide a number of services and support, and this decision has several implications. This decision has the following ramifications that potentially impact employee efficiencies, student and staff safety, privacy of data, and possibly instruction. Our security cameras, doorbell system and payroll system for non-exempt employees are all predicated on the use of our network and fiber. Therefore, Watershed will not use our camera system. They have agreed to use the same camera company and system, but integration between their system and ours is not guaranteed. It is something we are working on. Because Watershed will not be on our network, the school will not have a secure connection to the Department of Safety or Baltimore County Police Department for emergency response. In addition, they will have their own unique door buzzer and entry system. As you know, in BCPS, we use a one card system that grants staff access to buildings based on their role and their ID badge. For example, our safety managers have access to all the schools in their area with just a single ID. Watershed safety manager will have to have two door swipes, as will the community superintendent and the executive director of school support. Additionally, since they will not be on our network, payroll time and attendance for non exempt employees will have to be manually tracked, submitted, and processed. We anticipate for the first year that this will affect three staff members at Watershed Public Charter School. Uh, without access to our network and fiber, actor, Active Directory support for student and staff accounts cannot be provided. Active Directory uh, support is the system by, we, by which we use unique staff and student IDs to provide both with access to required systems. For example, I'll try to explain, in layman, I know Ms. Hen is nodding, um, in layman's terms, I'm our Adams in our system, and when I log into my device in BCPS1, based on my role and my permissions, the system allows me to go and see and do what I'm expected to do and doesn't allow me to go someplace that I'm not. Without this, the other thing that Active Directory support does is it allows us to roster teachers and students to curricular materials and resources within the learning management system. So for example, the wonders, reading resources are rostered 
to students through their connections to a homeroom teacher. Um, and so without that active directory support, students and staff will not have access to cur digital curricular resources. In addition, teachers will have to connect to the BCBS system using our virtual private network in order to access the systems that live behind our firewall. An example of such would be um, in order to take daily attendance, students have to access the student information system, but the student information system lives behind our firewall. So uh, with uh, watershed teachers not on our network and our wide area and our fiber, they would have to virtual, they would have to log into our virtual private network in order to take attendance. Um, the other thing that they would need to, when the other reason, one of the other reasons they would need to do this was any required password changes. So our system requires us to change our password at a particular frequency. And in order to do that, you have to be connected to the network. Lastly, this decision um, to not use our wide area network and fiber means that Watershed will need to identify its own internet filtering system um, for K-12 students and also have in place a firewall system to protect student and staff data as, as both are required. Finally, I wanted to provide an update on student enrollment at the charter school. Um, Dr. McComas shared with you the sort of the map of the um, accepted and waitlisted students. And I know that um, based on recent conversations with uh, Principal Jamin that there is um, a longer wait list now than there was originally. Um, charter school funded funding is provided by PCBS is dependent upon that enrollment. And as you know, um, MSDE requires us to provide an official enrollment count by school each September. And so to, for the board, for, as a reminder to the board, Watershed has a target enrollment of 176 students. Uh, that enrollment ensures approximately $2 million in BCBS funding, which supports their 17 and a half FTE, and um, anything left over could be used for educational programming. Um, I have an update. Um, when I when this presentation was loaded into board docs, their enrollment was 123. Um, as of this morning, the enrollment is 129 of the 176 accepted students. Um, based on the information we have about their budget, um, Watershed has very little margin of error should their September enrollment not reach their target of 176 students. Meaningful under-enrollment may impair their operations and provisions of the educational program. Therefore, we continue to encourage leadership at the school to efficiently verify and enroll accepted students into their program in order to support the educational program as intended. Um, and this concludes our summer where we are with opening the school. We continue to work with them and support them. Um, just two weeks ago, not even quite two weeks ago, we had our latest school opening meeting with Watershed and we have additional meetings scheduled. And just yesterday, as you know, we received additional written feedback from them. Uh, we wish them to be successful and we will continue to provide appropriate levels of support. And with that, Dr. Com Dr. McComas and I are prepared to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Dr. Adams. And uh, Ms. Mack, I saw your hand go up earlier, and then we'll, we'll work around to other board members. Hi, Dr. Adams, Hi. thank you. Um, you referenced um, an email that Watershed staff, I mean a letter um, that they sent yesterday yes, that um, refutes quite a bit of what you said. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you want to take the time to go point by point, but I think some of it's very important. Um, if that would be the board's desire, I could certainly speak to, I mean, I, I have a copy of the letter. I could, I, I could certainly speak to things in the letter um, that I, you know, I know I was referenced in the letter quite a bit, that I spoke to myself, and there are some other components that would probably be more appropriate for Mr. Dixit um, to speak to. Uh, I know there was um, concern that, uh, that I said that there isn't a violation of curriculum and that there isn't enough curriculum, and my response to that is both of those statements are true. Um, there is not a violation of the master agreement because when we met with Ms. Baton and Mr. Galante, they agreed that since teachers could not have the curriculum until they met with the principal and were interviewed and hired, and we didn't have a principal in place right. at, at the beginning of the fourth marking period, that it would be most appropriate for um, the teachers to not receive the curriculum until they were accepted and had agreed to transfer to the school. At the same time, Ms. Shea and I have had multiple meetings with Watershed about curriculum dating back to last December, as we've detailed in weekly updates and previous um, communications to the board. Um, during those meetings, um, we, and including a meeting with Ms. Baton and Ms. Mr. Galante, um, we explained how our curriculum is designed, what are those particular components, and what I have shared is I said, 
and what I've shared publicly, I would repeat today, what I have seen is not what I believe our teachers are used to as a staff member who sits across the table when there are teacher grievances. Um, what uh, Ms. Shea actually said in the last meeting, if I could quote her, um, Ms. Shea said, I wouldn't be able to get away with this mm -hmm. if I were rolling out this curriculum. Um, and so um, the idea that there isn't a violation of the master agreement and the fact that we, I feel that the curriculum doesn't meet what our teachers are typically used to are both factual and true. What Ms. Shea and I also shared was, but you've got a limited number of teachers. If they're on board, it's all about, and I think I shared that last update as well, it's all about what the teachers feel. We have curricula where the teachers feel it's too much. We have other curricula areas where they feel like we don't have enough. And even within those curricular areas, all teachers don't agree on what the curriculum in the span of it um, looks and feels like. So, um, you know, I take exception to the idea that we have not provided um, feedback around curriculum when I know that the collective number of staff hours far exceeds 450 staff hours of meeting with Watershed in, in regards to school opening and other things, especially curriculum. Ms. Shea and I met with them several times just generally on curriculum and then each curricular content office spent a meeting with them going into the curriculum. And in fact, in one of our meetings, um, once they had access to BCBS One and they could look at our, all of our curriculum, I said, well, since you have a program that is heavily integrated with science, look at our, thank you, look at our science curriculum. Our teachers, to my knowledge, have never really complained about our elementary science curriculum, so use that as a model. So um, I would say that I've, we have provided much um, feedback around the curriculum. Um, you know, My I, comments were not about the curriculum. <laughs> But thank you for that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 That's okay. I, that, that was the one that came to mind, I think, um, most readily. But if there's a particular portion of the letter, Ms. Mack, that you would want me to address, I'm certainly happy to do so. As long as it doesn't deal with the facility, then I need Mr. No, Dixon not. to come up um, here. I mean, just some of the statements under the use of their camera system. Is it not true that even though they're not using the same brand of door entry system, um, that they will make cards available to staff who require entry into the building. They will, and that, that's what my statement said, okay. was that they, the staff who would need entry to the system will have to have two cards. Um, and they have, which is what they're also saying, is that they are going to make right. a card available to the safety manager, to the community superintendent, to the executive director. There were, if I could speak, Mr. Corns will come up when I'm saying the wrong thing, I'm sure. Um, initially, there were discussions, and they were asking us for specifications around how to integrate their camera system into our camera system and we could not provide those specifications because that's not something that we operationally do so those specifications don't exist because we've not done business in that way before um, what mr. Corns did offer was to explore how we might be able to integrate that but going back to early school opening meetings as early as February um, one of the things we talked about um, knowing the work of our Department of Information Technology and how many things they have to integrate we we expressed concern that the timeline was very tight for integration to happen and so that's why my statements tonight said integration may not be possible because I do not know if it is possible to do that before the start of the school year but um, they will have a secure bu building that can only be accessed by some type of card is that a true statement that is what they are saying they will do Okay. Let me also clarify that, you know, part of our role is not just to shepherd the opening of the school and to make sure that that is shepherd to the rigor that we open our own schools, but to also to make sure that all of you are well aware and understand implications of where there are differences. So when there is an implication that the security is not accessible through our video, if I'm describing that correctly, it's important that you understand that. Are we saying that that stops the opening of the school? No, but you as leaders in this community need to be aware of where those differences are and what those implications are. And so that is part of our role is to shepherd all of you in your thorough understanding as well as shepherd watershed in the school opening process. For example, Baltimore County Police Department can look at our cameras in our schools mm -hmm. because they're all on one system. And I was at a school at the end of the school year and an incident happened and Dr. Ford was there probably 10 minutes later because he has a direct line, he could see the cameras and he was close by. And so without, 
integration or using the same system, Dr. Ford or an officer or resource officer assigned to their, those area elementary schools would have to toggle back and forth between those systems, which takes a little bit more time. And I, I think we would all agree that in emergency response, every second counts. And so that, that's just something, again, as Dr. McComas said, we want you to be aware of what the implications of the decisions are. Okay, and thank you, Dr. McComas, for that. I think what I find very confusing is this discussion about enrollment, um, and I think you updated the 123 to 129. Mm -hmm. My question is, how can we only have 129 students enrolled when we have 409 students who have applied? Uh, well, and we have a waiting list. So how sure. can we have a waiting list when we haven't filled every available that, seat? That is a great question. So um, if I could take us, if I could use a different example and think about our magnet programs. Um, my son, who's a recent graduate, applied to several magnet programs. He was accepted into several magnet programs. And so at one point, each of those high school programs believed Kai was coming to their school. Um, he only went to the school that we went to and said, this is definitely the one that he's coming to. And that happened to be um, Western. With enrollment, if I'm the parent and I've gotten it, my son or daughter has been accepted as a seat, I still need to bring all of my paperwork to the school and then the principal or the admin secretary then completes the enrollment within the system. And so um, I, I can't theorize, my theory would be you have parents who have accepted seats, but they have not brought their paperwork to the school to then allow Principal Jamin or their admin secretary to enroll the student into the system, which would then put that student into their bucket. But is there an issue where students are being unenrolled from the SIS system? So what we found was there was a day of glitches where it appeared one or two students, this did come up in the last school opening meeting, it appeared as if one or two students um, somehow were unenrolled. Since our, students, since our enrollment rolled over on July 1st, we have not been able to replicate that glitch. Um, when I first heard of it, which was before the school opening meeting, I contacted someone in Mr. Corn's shop. That person was able to show me that at that time they had an enrollment of 120, and then there were nine pending enrollments that had been started in the system but weren't complete. And so, um, that concern was heard, uh, it was verified as a glitch, and I believe Mr. Korn's team believes that they have resolved that. So um, I cannot unenroll a student if I'm at, you know, Featherbed. I cannot unenroll a student from Watershed at this point. So I, I guess I'm still confused. If Watershed is saying that they have 409 students and 119 students on their waiting list, that would presume that they know that they're going to fill all 176 seats. If I may, um, Ms. Mack, it is not, uh, you know, until the paperwork's in, it's, a, it's a, an intent to enroll. But until that paperwork is complete, it's not complete. And we are giving you frequently updates as that paperwork is complete. Are we here saying that the rest of those enrollments won't occur? No. But we are giving you in real time what the enrollment is today based on completed paperwork. Okay, and then just my final question, is there anything in this presentation at this point in time that would present Watershed from opening on September 3rd when the rest of BCPS schools open? In this presentation, I would say no, not in this presentation, no ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So you can guess my questions are around the IT decisions right, that I'm were gonna made. Guess I'm going to need Mr. Corn to come up here and sit with us. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Corns? Hi, Mr. Corns. Good evening. So my, my first questions were around why the decisions were made not to go with BCPS's fiber or wide area network, if you can speak to that or if Dr. Adams or um, so. The, that was a cost. I, I can only decision. I can only say what I believe is sure. the case. Um, the um, in a meeting that Dr. Adams and I had with uh, Watershed and um, their leadership, there was a conversation around um, the cost of the fiber to put in the ground, and uh, the um, I believe the and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the um, the belief that the building is not a permanent fixture that. Um, there, Mm -hmm. uh, three, yes. I think a three-year timeline was was put to place that uh, the um, 
the price of the fiber would exceed their um, expectation for the return on investment for three years. Sure. Okay. That makes sense as a temporary solution. That. And what what alternative are they going to I be believe used they're for using fi connectivity? BIOS? Yeah, BIOS. BIOS will be mm -hmm. used. And it was my understanding that all digital um, curriculum resources are available outside of the network. Students access them at home. They're not on the, the network that wasn't an issue. And maybe I misheard you, Dr. Adams. No, there, there are. Are there um, particular resources that are right. only available? There, there are things that are rostered to students. Rostered um, to students in the network. Through teachers, through the network. There are also things that are um, more openly available and that you don't have to be on the network to access them. Um, but students still get through them through BC BCBS1 so that their unique ID has still been passed through to our systems. Through Active Directory. Yes. Yes. Ma okay. So. So, Mrs. Trying Hannah, to understand the the implications again, as Dr. McComa said, shepherding our understanding mm -hmm. to say, sure. how is this going to be different in terms of the impact on students? And, because and that's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. And they intend to use their own curriculum, so that may not be something that's a big deal. However, if there's something that a teacher wanted to use as a supplement, as a resource, he or she may not be able to use it. And I think that's just important for teachers to understand. You know, they may be used to, they're used to certain curriculum materials. And even if um, we're doing, when we're doing an integrated approach, there might be a resource over here that they'd like to pull in to supplement that instruction, and they may not be able to do that. Right. The other concern is, you know, depending on the speed, if they're using FIOS or whatever, VPN tends to affect performance. So yes. when you said they'd have to access this through VPN, I kind of cringed because I know that that can affect performance mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's the last thing we want with well. testing and, and some other effects that that can have on, on students. So, so that is a concern, as so I'm sure it is. So, Ms. Hen, only, the, well. only the staff would be utilizing the VPN. The students, yeah, the students, students would be driving through. I believe uh, wa um, Watershed's um, intention is to utilize Chromebooks mm -hmm. um, with a Google Apps for Education environment that they would be uh, in control and maintenance of. Okay. Um, um, I, I believe that at last we were talking that uh, there was work being done to have that environment set up. Um, so that, that would replicate our elementary model that we're currently using in BCPS as well um, in a separate uh, environment. Um, but the, the, the most recent uh, occurrence that we've got is in order to alleviate some of the need for uh, consistent VPN connection, uh, we're going to be able to put a, um, a kind of a light duty point to point um, wireless access point in the front office that would allow for the secretary who's going to need to be on the, the SIS uh, basically all day to have access to that. Um, so when we talk about what this looks like, this is the only school in BCPS that will be set up this way. So we're kind of in a little bit of uncharted territory. Um, so some of the uh, bits that we uh, need to just work out are, you know, is the not to get too technical about it, but the VPN tunnel. Are we going to do split traffic or are we going to run everything through that tunnel? And uh, if we run everything through that tunnel, then it cuts off local access to all the resources. But if we do split traffic, is it going to route the right way? So there's just some unknowns that we're, we're working through. As, as uh, Dr. McComas and Dr. Adams were both saying, um, I don't see anything in here that's going to stop th this progress. Uh, we just need to be cognizant of the fact that of the schools that we have set up, this will be the one that is an outlier. Right. Okay. Will your team be reviewing the filtering that will be in place um, for access or? Not necessarily. Okay. Does that give you any pause and or concern in terms of I, what content students will be able to access? So when we come down to content. Arfa. We always will address directly to parents as far as what the parent, the parent concern is. I, I, I can speak only local and immediately that we, we deal with a lot of internal calls about uh, what, what, what a parent may deem as appropriate or inappropriate content. Um, you and I have had conversation uh, through meetings as well. So I think that with, with the confidence that I would have to put in, um, when we say SIPA uh, requirements, um, they are all centered around obscene and pornographic images. That is the federal law. That is the, the floor of what we filter. Um, now, we can 
dialogue about what that means if I only set our filter to obscene and pornographic images, um, the content that would be above and beyond that would be not appropriate. Um, the, the, the belief that I have around Watershed's capabilities of doing that, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can say one way or the other whether or not they'll be able to filter in a way that would make their parents comfortable, but I believe that that would be a conversation between the school and the, and the parents in this scenario. But in terms of an equivalency, I mean, are we saying that there's going to be something that gives us as a board comfort that we, that our kids have a level of protection that we are comfortable with? That's what I'm asking I, I can't, in terms of I can't speak to the filtering solution filtering. That, that Watershed plans to use. I, I don't know that answer. They're not using ours. Are they using something that we're comfortable with? I don't, I don't know what they're planning on using. So let me interject here. So Ms. Hen, one of the things, and I think you already know from the letter you received from Watershed, is we were planning for Watershed to come forward with Dr. Jones because at this point uh, we will continue to help shepherd the systemic uh, startup of a school. But as we move closer and closer to the start of the school year, certainly our community superintendent and the principal, and I presume probably the executive director, Ms. Um, Jesse Leeson, um, will present in August, uh, on the August 6th that we are bringing that forward as an opportunity for them to continue to update you. Um, and at that point, they will probably be able to answer that question. We will continue to be in the background, continuing to support the startup of a school, and we will continue to provide you updates. Again, our role is to both shepherd that organization, but to also shepherd all of you and your understanding and your awareness of what is happening and as we go and as we have always done as you raise questions to us we will do our very best to answer those questions as thoroughly as we can thank you you're welcome mr mcmillian i believe you were next having questions yes real quickly i noticed some there's some watershed watershed leadership back there is it appropriate that i ask them two brief questions no. Uh, Dr. Williams and I, if it's okay with the staff, if you want to come forward, if you're prepared to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Just two, they can stay there. It's just two brief questions I have for them. They have to come forward to be uh, speaking into the microphone. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Okay. And if we need to have follow up time for answers, uh, that's okay as well. Okay, Mr. McMillian. It's two simple questions. Thank you very much for allowing me to ask them. Are you in agreement with the 129 enrollment numbers that were presented today? No. Would you like more? That gives me another <laughs> question. Yes. What numbers do you have? Um, my number is, I think, 153. There are a couple of problems. Students have been unenrolled. My own son was unenrolled today. It was not a one-day problem. Um, so it's a long process for us to go back and figure out who's been dropped. Um, we're in the we're doing it, but SIS has been offline for a week for um, for maintenance. So we just got access again today. Okay. And my second question is: Are do you project that you're going to start school on Tuesday, September third, with everybody else? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I appreciate um, mm -hmm. staff, and I appreciate everyone's work on this issue, and I understand also that it is um, a new situation for most of us on the board. We haven't had a charter school, so we appreciate everyone's flexibility and working through issues as we navigate something that's new. So we appreciate the updates, um, and we do have additional questions that we're going to uh, ask. We do have time. We're we're actually running right on time for our meeting schedule. Um, so, Mr. Kuhn, I believe you were next. I'm going to pass. Thank you. <clears throat> next is Ms. Rowe. Um, maybe you've covered this already, but ha are they going to be using our Raptor system and our volunteer training and all of the other things that we do to ensure um, security for students in our facilities. I, yes on Raptor. Uh, Mr. Burke says yes on Raptor. Yes. Are there additional questions? Um, I did 
want to invite Mr. Dixit uh, to answer the question related to um, MSDE waiving um, the issue related to the um, health suite. Uh, Are you? Good, good evening again. Good evening again, Mr. Dixit. Uh, one thing I have to compliment them is for moving fast. The speed at which they are working in terms of renovation is quite impressive. There are two items that were of concern to us. Number one was the privacy issue with the health suite. What we have been asked to comply with COMAR is to have a separate private space for examination and a separate space for uh, conversation, for consultation. This building does not have that. But in talking to state architects, they are willing to waive that requirement. Now, I just wanted board to know that this is not the way we do our buildings. So that's one issue. The second issue was the equipment size for a uh, kitchen. They are working actively on this, and from what I've been informed, they intend to comply with that requirement. But it's not complete as of today. Okay, thank you. Um, so we appreciate that. And is that something that the um, approval, you have that in writing from the state architect, or that's something that you we will have, be obtained? We have verbal approval from the state architect, and we are waiting for the written approval. Okay, great. Um, any other questions? or comments from board members? Dr. Williams? Just want to make a quick comment. Um, the senior cabinet has shared this information with me and we talked about, Dr. McComas mentioned that we felt it necessary at the upcoming board me meeting that we have representatives from Watershed and our office to show the collaboration, to hear the next steps in terms of the opening. So. That's why we allow this, the, the questions to be answered, but I really think the next step is so you can hear from both the school staff leadership and the central office leadership about the work as uh, a symbolism of the collaboration and to discuss the work that has been addressed and those items that are causing some questions and how best we could answer that. So I believe the next meeting is in August, so we're looking forward to that presentation. Could I ask you, would it be appropriate to have um, board members submit questions regarding this and then have updates in the weekly update um, since we don't have another meeting for four weeks and things are um, happening every week, apparently? Mm -hmm. Things we, change every day. Yes, yes, we welcome that. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. We You're appreciate welcome. that. The next item on our agenda is item P, board member comments. And for that, we're just going to start uh, and go around the room. Um, Ms. Rowe, we'll start with you this time. So I hope everyone is having a very good summer. Um, I see lots of kids on the playgrounds and I'm very happy that we have a new basketball court at Lock Raven Technical Academy and Hillcast Elementary School. And now the Lock Raven um, Rec Council also has a new basketball court because we have a community volunteer who's been putting them in. And I also attended the Safe Schools Conference. And for anyone who did not attend that, you really missed out. Because for years I've been talking about trauma and trauma-informed practices, and that was the entire focus of the whole thing, and it was really fantastic. And I'm very happy that as a school system, we're addressing um, the experiences that children have that cause them to come into the classroom unavailable to learn, and that be because of these different techniques that people in our school system are actively learning about and teaching others about, we can help these children in ways that are not complicated or difficult to learn. And it really does make all the difference in the world. Um, I had a lot of trauma in my upbringing and I had a third grade teacher and she made the difference. She was a mandatory reporter, she went to court to fight for me and she brushed my hair every day. 
And she made sure that other kids didn't pick on me, that they understood that it's okay to be different and that everyone has different experiences. And for that one teacher to make a difference in my life, it mattered. It mattered a lot. It made a difference between my outcome today and what my outcome could have been and what the outcome of some of my peers in similar situations is very different. So I would like to encourage every teacher in our school system that when you have that difficult child who does things that don't make sense to you, to just remember that just being kind, just trying to understand, and a little bit of patience can make the difference in that child's entire outcome for their entire life. And one person really can make that kind of difference in another person's life. Thank you. Ms. Scott. Thank you. And thank you so much for that, Lily. Um, that's, I also attended the Safe Schools and I found it very informative and very enlightening um, to learn about um, all of the ways that we can um, address and identify trauma and um, support our students. I would also like to echo the sentiments of our community and um, a lot of folks here in welcoming um, Omar, Omar Rashid, as well as Dr. Williams to uh, BCPS. We're very happy to have you here, both of you, and I look forward to um, working together effectively to support all of our students. I'd also like to wish a happy birthday to board member Cheryl Pastor, who is not here, hopefully somewhere having fun. <laughs> Um, and I just hope that everyone is having a wonderful summer. I hope students are getting a lot of reading done and hopefully preventing the, what do they call it, the summer brain drain? Summer slide. Summer slide. So um, enjoy summer and um, hopefully everybody's having a great summer. Thank you. Ms. Mack. I am going to try to make up for lost time and we'll be visiting the schools um, this summer that I did not visit prior to the start of summer. Um, next week, I will be attending um, or observing the curriculum writing workshop. And finally, I would like to c congratulate Western Tech's Jeremy Carlino for being one of six Maryland finalists for the Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. When I told my daughter about it, she responded that she remembers um, while at Sudbrook, standing on lab desk at Sudbrook, reciting the quadratic equation over and over again. I don't know the lab desk part. Um, <laughs> she credits Mr. Carlino and Mr. Bullock from Western Tech for her love of math then and her love of math today. So congratulations to Mr. Carlino. Mr. McMillian. Uh, thanks. The older I get, the quicker time flies. There are 28 days before our next Board of Education meeting on August 9th. I recommend to each and every one in this viewing audience, including Dr. Williams, go do something fun and challenging in the next 28 days. Thank you. Ms. Hen. Thank you. So I want to give a shout out to one of our very special BCPS students. His name is Andrew, and he's a student at Stonely Elementary. In April, Andrew was diagnosed with leukemia. And he has been fighting and continues to fight extremely hard every day. He's one of the toughest kiddos I know. He's my hero. I'm a proud member of Team Andrew. And I would encourage you and, and our kids and our system, if you have time, we want you to read and write this summer. And if you're writing, please take a moment, um, drop him a line. He loves to receive cards, words of encouragement. Um, you can send them here, um, care of Andrew, care of me here at Greenwood, or to P.O. Box 20209, Towson 21284, or send them um, here to Greenwood. We'll make sure he gets them um, to Andrew. And again, I know he'd really appreciate it. So Team Andrew, if you're listening, we're thinking of you, bud. Um, keep fighting. You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Mr. Rashid? Um, I just want to piggyback on what Lily said about um, teachers be, like being not like a, the effect of what one teacher can have. I know personally, when I first came here, all my teachers were extremely supportive. Um, they guided me through everything. It was difficult at first, but uh, they pushed me through. My my AP psychology teacher, Mr. Babcock, uh, my teachers now, Miss Pulley, Miss Lab, Mr. Taylor. All my teachers have been extremely supportive, and I know that one teacher can make a huge difference. So just to be kind to all of our students and know that you can make a big impact in their lives. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mr. Hayden. Mr. McMillian almost stole word for word what I was going to say. And uh, yeah, I have to be careful. You know, in school you're worried about somebody's copying off of you. So I have to check him out here to see if that happened. <laughs> but the important thing is we have a good part of the summer in front of us. A lot of us have some vacation ahead. Be safe, have a good time. And for those of us who have jobs and study to do and new jobs where we have to get involved in things, uh, you know, just keep at it. We've got a great school system and it's just going to get better. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn? Okay, I'm, I'm going to be short and sweet. I just want to welcome the new members and the superintendent and uh, wish everybody um, a fantastic summer. Be safe and, and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Mr. Offerman. Uh, yes. I'd like to also uh, welcome Mr. Rashid and Dr. Williams uh, to join this, this group as we try to provide the best education for Baltimore County students and, for, and support for their families to the rest of you can. I'd also like to welcome, even though she has no, our official term has not begun, Miss uh, Miss Sexton, who uh, will be t will be coming, who, who will be the uh, incoming president of TABCO. Uh, she done, uh, you know, certainly, uh, yeah, I, uh, she has a tremendous challenge in front of her, and I'm sure she'll do a great job. Uh, I'd also like to thank, in this case, uh, Miss uh, Miss Baton for the years of service. Uh, of the people I've known, she, not only she's done a great job supporting her group, her teachers, but also always in her heart were, were the kids of Baltimore County. And, and I think that that's something I'll always remember. And I, I thank her for all of her efforts. And uh, she certainly has made this a better place and, and this system better for, for what she's given us. Uh, final thank you would go to uh, Dr. McComas and Mr. Stoll. And I'm going to ask Dr. McComas again to remind me the name. Leanne Schubert and Ryan Imbriali. Great, great group. Uh, I met with them Monday, and we talked about the magnet program, so I would be better informed of what's currently going on and plans for the future. And I had a concern, which uh, the board has uh, uh, the board has uh, dealt with uh, previously. Uh, but I, I was concerned that there would be changes were going to be made, so we wouldn't have the same problem occur again. But I, in my thinking, with a, big, with a big system like this, it takes a long time to change things. Well, I was wrong. The t problem was was discussed with us in January. By the time uh, the, the, the time the change needed to be made for the next coming group, the changes were made, and I think in a very effective and, and efficient and fair manner. Uh, providing greater opportunity and greater equality of of uh, consideration. I mean, that that just super work, and uh, I, I'm very proud to be part of that. And I, I again th thank them and all, uh, all the staff members who have been nothing but supportive for me and in my quest to, to learn more and uh, and and do a better job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. The next item is. The next item is item Q, board committee updates. And we'll go around the room with that. But first, I wanted to invite Ms. Rowe, although it's not a board committee, to uh, just comment briefly on the report of the legislative task force, of which she's the chair. So the legislative task force is the anti-bullying task force. And um, due on July 1st was the data portion and just the data portion. So. I think um, it was delivered to everyone. Um, the next report is the full report, and that will have executive summaries and um, fulfilling the rest of the criteria of the legislative um, task force. Um, Mr. Omar Rashid is going to be taking over Halima Adekoya's place as the vice chair of the task force, and we'll start meeting in September to fulfill the rest of those uh, legislative requirements. Thank you for your work on that, and we look forward to you representing the student voice as Ms. Adekoya did on that uh, legislative task force. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mack, for Curriculum Committee. So the Curriculum Committee has continued to meet through the summer, and we were happy to add Mr. Offerman to our team. 
I can say that I, just like Mr. Offerman just said, appreciate Dr. McComas and her team spending so much time to date providing overviews to the curriculum committee in the various areas that increase the knowledge base of the team members. I'm very encouraged that open court will be rolled out this fall because I continue to receive so much positive feedback about how effective it was when BCPS had it in the past and people are really looking forward to it. And as I stated earlier, um, I'm looking forward to spending time next week observing uh, my first curriculum writing workshop. So thank you again, Dr. McComas and your team. Thank you, and Ms. Hen for Buildings and Contracts. So the Building and Contracts Committee met earlier this evening. I'd um, like to thank staff for their diligence and hard work answering all of our questions. I appreciate you putting up with us, so thank you. Mr. Kuhn for Audit Committee, please. Thank you. The, um, the Audit Committee met last on uh, June 18th. We discussed um, the fixed asset inventory update and the FY18 change in principal audit follow-up results. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and finally, as chair of the Policy Review Committee, I just wanted to share that we met on June 17th. The minutes of the committee's June meeting are available for viewing on the school system's website. Um, also, the video of the meeting is available. Additionally, the committee's approved schedule for the 2019-2020 school year is also posted on the website. And the first meeting of the new school year will be held on September 16th. And I did just want to say that I'm just so proud of the work that this board has done through the committee um, structure that we have. Uh, in December, we started with 12 board members, eight who were brand new. We had to staff five standing committees. We had a variety of ad hoc committees in the last six, month, six months. And I am just uh, really grateful for all of the enthusiasm, energy, the experience that we have on the board. Six parents, three retired um, BCPS uh, educators, each with over 30 years experience. So we really have a dynamic group, a wide diversity of uh, experiences. And I really look forward to what's going to be our first full year together uh, with the year starting on July 1 and the work that we're able to do to advance education for our children so I just really am very appreciative of all the work that has been done and on the website there is the list of all of the committees the committee members the dates of the committee meetings and also the agendas uh, the minutes and uh, the videos so any um, stakeholders that want to look into that uh, feel free to do that so thank you very much the uh, last item is information. Uh, we have on board docs uh, the following information. We have the revised superintendent's rule 1110, community relations, communications with the public regarding publications, radio, television, digital media. There's also a revised superintendent's rule 1280, community relations, community involvement, boundary changes. There's also the superintendent's rule that goes along with policy 8130, policies scheduled for review in 2019-2020, the Board of Education of Baltimore County's Policy Review Committee policy editing conventions. We also have a questions and answers on appeals and hearings before the Board of Education of Baltimore County. That's a resource for students and parents and others uh, to see how that process works. We also have the fiscal year 2021 operating and capital budget schedules that includes opportunity for public input. We also have the financial report for the months ending May 2018 and 2019. And we also have the uh, meeting minutes for the Southeast Area Education Advisory Council meetings that were held on April 23rd and May of 20, May, May 28th. Um, that brings us to item S, announcements. Our final item for the evening. Um, our next board meeting is going to be Tuesday, August 6, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. right here. So we appreciate uh, staff and everyone that came forward to this meeting to welcome Dr. Williams and to continue the work of the school system and also to welcome Mr. Rashid. We really look forward to continuing the work together. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned.